placed it somewhere here. He said there was an eastern migration going there and the others stayed put. These are the tricks that mainstreamers, particularly Witzel, use to mislead scholarship. Fortunately, Conrad Els and George Cardona corrected him. And then he claimed that this was an error made by his editor. Now, <laughs> if you want, you believe it. That's all I have to tell you today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure listening to you. Uh, I should say, being a Westerner, I'm having so much insight into it. Uh, Eric Weller, it's, it's invigorating. Thank you very much. I don't know whether this question will be relevant to what you've spoken, but I have seen from the Western scholars a fixation on hating. We have a concept here called Anadhi. A, a, a concept? Anadhi. Anadhi. Yeah, there is no beginning, there is no end. It's on that which is there all the time. And time itself is a new concept. I want to understand what the Western scholars are thinking about this concept which is essentially very in nature. I, if you could throw some light, I would be willing. Anadhi is, of course, a, a, a concept in uh, Indian philosophy, certainly. And it is connected with the one which is breathing by itself and its outward breath creates the universe and its inward breath withdraws it at the end of the calcul. Hmm? But this process has no beginning and no end. So this is the concept of Anadi as far as I understand it. It's not actually mentioned as such in Rig Veda, but we find it in later texts. Fine. Now, that, that's it. Okay? Anything else? Please. Can I, can I please apply, reply to the gentleman? Please, please be seated. In Rig Veda and later, Asura means God, means Lord, High Lord. This is the first meaning. Towards the end of the Rig Veda and later in classical period, Asura becomes demon and Asuratva, the demonic nature. But until then, it has both meanings. And in the beginning of the Rig Veda, the early books of the Rig Veda, Asura is a higher title than God. Okay? Overlord, High Lord. Rudra is called Asura. Varuna is called Asura. Agni is called Asura. Okay? As a gentleman here, can you give him the microphone? Sir, we thank you for a very fine and elucidating lecture. I'm, I'm coming back to this Asura. And uh, I think the, there is a mention of Ahura Master, whom the person worship perhaps even today. And uh, we derive from Ahura Asura. But we also have 
Sura means Deva. And A Sura means Yopada. Dharma At Dharma. Sura At Sura. Would you like to comment perhaps on that? Certainly, yes. Thank you very much for bringing this subject up. Yes, I would like to comment on that. Thank you. The word Asura is original. It is not made of Asura. It is made of Asu plus the termination Ra. As you have Vandu Ra, you have many words with the termination Ra and it usually is an adjective. Sura is a later construction to explain Asura. Asura. It is not before Asura, it is not even contemporary. It shows up later in the language. Asu plus da. Is that all right? Okay. Anything else? Please give to the lady at the back the microphone. And how would you exactly explain the word Asu? Asu means uh, life, uh, energy, force. Asu. Or, they, they said, or another word is spirit, really. Spiritual force. Anything else? A lady here? Over here? Oh, okay. After this. Do you think uh, Asura is an analogical creation? I'm sorry? Is it an analogical creation? Asura, the word? I thought I explained it. What, what else is there to explain? I thought I explained Asura. What do you see there? There is also the lady behind me. Just a minute, I haven't finished with this lady. Um, Asur was a city in Mesopotamia. It may be connected with Asura, or it may not be. It has got two S's. Asur. Uh, and there was a god, Asur, also. They may be connected or not. I don't know. I don't think so. I think they are independent creations, but there may have been some connection. Now, what we do know is that in Nordic, Old Icelandic, the god is called As, and the plural is Asir. So it may well be connected there. As is certainly from Asu, spiritual force. We believe that. Uh Veda is above Rishayana. It's not written by anyone. Do you agree with that? What, the Vedas? Vedas. Yes, please sit down. Undoubtedly, uh, the Vedic, the sacred Vedic law is above Rishayana. But then, how do we know about it? We only know about it because some Purushas gave it to us. So it's a Purusheya as far as the inspiration goes, but it's very much Purusheya as far as the formulation and the expression goes. So it's both. It's not just a Purusheya because if it was only a power share, we wouldn't know about it because we are not connected with the divine Lord up above. We are very much connected with the earth, unfortunately. <laughs> so if he talks to us, we don't listen and if 
We do hear something we don't understand. The lady behind you also would like to say something. When you were talking about uh, the gods, the Hindu Panathin, and the equivalent in the Greeks, do you also have, like, how we have demons and evil, do you have manifestations in the Greek Panathin? Would you say the last sentence once again? I have difficulty in following. When you speak about Devas and Asuras, we have a distinction in the Hindu Panathin about who are the Devas and Asuras. Yeah, that, don't, the, don't, don't talk. Just a second, don't talk so fast. You start very nicely, very slowly, and suddenly you begin to run on like a, like a machine gun. In the, in the Greek, there is a Greek uh, uh, hierarchy of gods and uh, demons. Do you have a distinction between gods and demons? Between yes, of course. Demons? Yes, of course. Yes. We heard about the gods, we heard about the devas. We didn't hear so much about the Greek asuras. Oh, well, I was... Please sit down. Um, I was treating the matter linguistically. So uh, I only dealt with words that are the same in both. But the Greeks did have demons, yes, lots of them, many more than you have. <laughs> they had the Titans, first of all, which were the first, very first gods. But we don't know much about them. And then there are demonic creatures of different types. Many. The Titans were confined to Tartarus below the earth in hell. Hades, as it's called. Anything else? Yes, this lady. No, you first. This lady. You were telling about the surface. You were telling about the Sakta Sindhu area, Sakta Sindhu. Sakta Sindhu, yes, I was talking about that. Yeah, that same area is basically Indus Valley civilization. So yes. Where, so where was Indus Valley civilization if again prepared the native of the Sakta Sindhu? Now you do exactly the same thing, you start with the machine gun. Please, more slowly. Yes. And where was the Indus Valley civilization? In Sakta Sindhu. The Aryans were there. The Indian people were the Aryans. Yes. And uh, later they migrated to Iran. Well, some of them did, not all of them. Some, yeah. So some of them migrated even further on. No, but you know, from the when we were young, we used to learn that okay, some uh, those, those people were not the Aryans. They were the. But that's the old, the old theory. We, are, we dispense with that. <laughs> now you, 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 you Indians must learn to think differently now. Stop thinking about the indo aryans the very people coming from somewhere else. They did not come from somewhere else, they were here. Okay, that's what the Rig Veda says, that's what Bhavadhyana says. Now, why, please sit down, why do you believe foreigners and you don't believe the authorities in your own tradition? <laughs> Now, you have the hymns of the Rig Veda, tells you, we've always been here, the five tribes expanded away. You have hymns telling you that the sages traveled abroad to spread the Aryan culture. You have Baudhayana, much later, telling you there was a westward migration. Now, what else do you need? I mean, historians should take into account what the original sources say. They should not take into account what Western scholars say 5,000 years afterwards. How do they know? They weren't there. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, seven rivers. Sapta Sindhu are the seven rivers. No, that's 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 Sinbad the sailor. He's saying the seven seas. <laughs> no, it's okay. Please. Slightly, I feel. Can we talk about the suras and the asuras? 
in all this. Then the another genus, the Rakshas, Rakshasas, who were they? Because right now, with all this English, Amar Chitra, and common thing, yes. Rakshas are also called demons. Yes. Rama is called a demon. Yes, okay. But to the Arimsha, so many people. Yes, fine. Rakshas is a demon. There is a hymn, 1133, which talks about a desolate area, darkness, with Rakshasas, Yadumatis, Yadudhanas, you know, sorcerers, ghouls, all together there. But really, there is another side to the Rakshas, the Rakshasa. Because Raksh means what? Thank you, to protect. So Rakshasas were also protectors, protecting demons. But somehow they went astray. Um, I mean, some Rakshasas are presented in the text as great kings with great followings, great wealth, and so on. But generally speaking, yes, Rakshasas are demons, demonic creatures that torture people. Yes. yes. following the question. No, my question is, this origin of the Surah-Varsa Satsuka, where Ahura equals Satsuka, means the uh, uh, Lord, uh, uh, mighty God. But later, in the course of the uh, it becomes a Surah, and then gets confused the opposite of Surah, which is good. And I'm interested in this as a student of the world. Does it come because of a fruitification? You're not really putting a question. You're saying your own view about the matter. No. No? I haven't heard a question yet. Yes. Was this because of a crudification of the original language? You can say the vulgarizing of the original language. And therefore, it, it has no sanction by itself. Do you think that? I think I haven't heard a question. I'm sorry. What is the question? Can, the can question 